Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, the King of Kings. Thank you, the Lord of Lords. You are the miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. Oh, Jesus. Your name is a miracle. Your power is miraculous. The things you do testify of the wonderfulness of your name. We have not forgotten what you did in John 2, verse 1 to 12, where you turn water to wine. Father, nobody had done it before. You are a miracle worker. Father, even as we have gathered in your name this amazing night, we are confident that a miracle is waiting for us. The greatest of all miracles, that we may know him and the power of the resurrection, that we may repent and know Christ more. Father, I pray tonight that such a miracle will happen. That someone who has not given his life to Christ will give his life to Christ tonight. We are praying, Father, that as many that have rebelled against you and your ordinances and have now stood against your ways, O oh Lord, we pray for forgiveness of sins. And at the same time, Father, we are praying that you may do the miracle that you did in the life of Paul. Yes, we were so of Tarsus, but when he encountered you, when you taught his life, when you taught his heart, O oh Lord, oh Jesus, he became the Apostle Paul. Father, today, may you make somebody an Apostle, because of the miraculous power of your name, acting in our hearts, O oh Lord. Father, have your way. Fill us with thy Shekinah, in the name of Jesus, Holy God Almighty. We recognize our sins, our unrighteousness, our iniquities, and so we come to you. Asking for mercy, Lord. Asking for forgiveness of our sins. Father, the hour has come. Wash us with thy precious blood, such that we shall be whiter than snow. Take not away from all the gift of your Holy Spirit, but restore unto all the joy of thy salvation. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. You are the God of mercy. Show mercy again to your people. Father, O oh Lord, come and take over, Lord. Titus chapter 3, verse 5, and the Bible says, Not by works of of righteousness, but that which, which we have done, no, but according to his mercy, he has saved us, not by our righteousness, for even our righteousness, as the scripture tells us in Isaiah 64 verse 6, are just like filthy rags before the presence of the Lord. And so, Father, I will come to you asking for your mercy, not on our own merits of my righteousness, for our righteousness is just like a fit rag. But on the merits of your grace, of mercy, on the merits of your own righteousness, we are therefore coming to you, asking you, Father, have mercy on us. Forgive us, O Lord, our sins. In the name of Jesus, cleanse us such that we shall be water and snow. Cleanse us with your precious blood. Show us your mercy again. Your mercy is beyond the law. And so we're asking you, Lord, in the dispensation of grace, let your mercy take us beyond the law. In the name of Jesus, let your mercy bring blessings again. Show us your mercy again. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. Because we know that having asked for forgiveness of sins, that you have already done that, forgiving us our sins. And so with every confidence, we'll come to your throne of grace, to you, O Lord, of Hebrews 4 verse 12, to receive grace in a time of need, the grace to worship you, the grace to adore you, the grace to praise you, the grace to listen to your word. Let that grace come upon us now. Father, we cannot do without you. Touch us again, O Lord. We are thirsting for you. We are hungering for you. Father, touch us again. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, let it be said at the end of the prayer that you have indeed blessed me, that you have blessed your children. And the Bible says, Job 5, verse 22, you will laugh at destruction and uh, at famine, and you need not to fear any wild animal. So shall it be tonight that through the mercy of this night, I shall laugh, I shall laugh in the name of Jesus. I shall laugh at destruction. I shall laugh at famine. I shall laugh at those wild animals, those sickness. We are laughing at them already. In the name of Jesus, Job 8, 21, and the Bible says, He will yet fill your mouth with laughter, and your lips with shout of joy. Far for Father Almighty. We are thanking you that this night is our night. We give you all thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. And so, Father Almighty, may the windows of heaven be opened now and let your angels begin to come upon the prayer line, begin to take over the prayer line in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, Father, have your way. Your word says, 
Psalm 43, verse 10. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Father, O oh Lord, many of us are troubled, but because you have told us to be still and see what we are going to do tonight, we are therefore stay before you. And we are confident that you have done it already, that you are going to visit us in a special way. In the name of Jesus, come to visit the land. Come to water the land. Come to water my family with thy light, O oh Lord. With thy water of grace. Father, we need you, O oh Lord. Psalm 65, verse 10. And the Bible says, You have visited the land and the watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. So shall it be tonight, O oh Lord. According to Psalm 65, verse 10. That you, O oh Lord, shall visit me. That you shall visit my land. That you shall visit my family. That you shall visit my my life, that you shall visit my destiny. Father, I thank you tonight that you are coming to water my garden. You are coming to water my destiny. Father, we say thank you. Thank you that richly shall you bless your children tonight. Blessed be your name, for your word is full of riches. Your word is life. Your word is our hope. Father, therefore, we anchor on your word, and we use your word as the sword of the Spirit to pull down all the giants that are standing on our ways. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Therefore, I want to take over. Holy Spirit, take over. In the name of Jesus. We cover the atmosphere now with the blood of Jesus. We cover everything we are going to pray for with the blood of Jesus. For we know that our God is here. He is here to bless His children. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank You. You are a prayer answering God. When we call on You, You answer. In Psalm 137, verse 3. And the Bible says, On the day I called, You answered me. On the day I called, you answered me. Father, this was the testament of David, your own son, in Psalm 173. But today, it is becoming some testimony. It is becoming my testimony. For on this day I called you, and on this day you answered me. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, because you're not going to be silent any longer. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for showing mercy. Thank you for showing love. Thank you for the healing you already done. Thank you for stepping into this prayer platform to come and bless your people. Thank you, Father, for stepping into our families. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Holy God, mighty Jesus. Thank you, in the ancient of days. To you be all the glory. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, our Father. We cover ourselves, Lord of Jesus. The instrument you are going to use tonight, O Lord, we are covering him with the blood of Jesus. For without you, Holy Father, there is nothing he can do. He cannot even function without you. He can't even say a word without you. Father, O Lord, therefore empower him. Take over him, Lord. Father, anoint his lip with the fire. Anoint his tongue with the fire. Anoint his mouth with the fire. So that every word that will come out of his mouth shall receive the honor of heaven tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that from this moment, I begin to function as your oracle. In the name of Jesus. Father, have your way. We cover the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. We cover the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To you be all the glory. I just want you to begin to thank the Lord in advance. Thank Him for what He has done this night. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him for the wonders He has done for you. Just begin to thank Him. Begin to appreciate Him. That God is here. There is no one that's like Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. My dear friends, I have the great pleasure tonight to welcome each and every one of us to the Heart of Jesus and Mary Ministries. The Heart of Jesus and Mary Ministries. This is a Bible-believing ministry. We reflect on the Word of God. We listen to the Word of God. We uh, ponder it. We digest it. Because the Word of God is life. The Word of God is life. Praise Lord. And now we're about to listen to the Word of God. We pray that this Word of God will give us the life of Jesus. The Bible says that by the Word we have received, 
you have already received life. You know why? Because the Word of God gives life. The Word of God is life. May that Word of God enlighten us, bring life into every deadness in us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading shall be taken from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry about that. It is the Gospel of John. Thank you, Jesus. For those who are answering, look in the prayer line. Forgive me. Those who are answering, joy, John. May you begin to rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're taking our reading from John chapter 2. John chapter 2. From verse 1 to 12. John chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the, the model of Jesus was there. Now, Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, then the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you? And to me, my hour has not yet come. My hour, my hour, my time has not yet come. And verse 5 and following says, His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there, we are six stone water jars. For the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 to 30 gallons of water, Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And then he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they did. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had been become wine, and they did not know where it came from, though the servant who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom, the bridegroom, and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept this good wine until now. Jesus did this. The first of his signs in Cana of Galilee. And they revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, his disciples. And they remained there a few days. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. And praise be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear friends, today I come with a message titled, God's Timing. 
God's timing. As we see in John chapter 2, verse 1 to 12, account of the wedding at Cana, it was a wedding in which everything was going well. Everything going according to plan. But then, all of a sudden, there was no wine in the pot. It was in this situation that Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to Jesus and told Jesus, according to John 2, verse 4, I mean, verse 3, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. That is to say, my time has not yet come. That is to say, this is not... This is not the timing for this event. This is not the timing for this miracle. This is your demand. This is not the time. In the, in the heavenly calendar, it is, today is not the day for this miracle. It's not the time. It's not the day for what you are demanding from me. <laughs> Mary was asking something very difficult, really. But because she knew that her son is God, and that her son is able to do all things, and that her son listens to her, her son honors her. She understands the relationship between her and her son. That her son would never, and had never said no to mama. Mary knew that. Mary understand that relationship. And so she went to Jesus and said, the wine had finished. She, she didn't even say, give them wine. No, no, I won't even watch it. She just said, the, the wine had finished. Because she, she had already gotten a way to communicate with Jesus. Even though it was recorded that she said, <laughs> their wine had finished. But it went beyond that. It was more of heart-to-heart -heart talk than uh, uh, mouth to ear conversation. No, 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 no. This, this was heart talking to heart. This was the heart of Jesus talking to the heart of Mary. And this was the heart of Mary talking to the heart of Jesus. When a conversation is heart to heart, it, it, is, it is not the same thing as when it is mouth to mouth talk. What was seen or heard by John was what came out of Mary through her mouth. And that was the one had finished. He also heard what Jesus said, my hour has not yet come. But what he did not hear were the conversations going on in the heart to heart talk. It has something we call machine to machine communication. I'm in engineering and the machine could talk to machine without human interface. As a matter of fact, two computers can talk without you owning, who own the two computers not even knowing what they're talking or communicating. That's what they call, you know, handshaking. They could be handshaking without you knowing what is, what is being transferred, what is going on. But when you want to know what's going on, then you look at the screen. The screen calls an interface to translate the machine language into human language that you can be able to understand what's going on there. When we come to the level of having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God, then we have reached a, a, a certain glamorous level of a spiritual relationship with God. And Mary today is that woman who has reached the level of heart-to-heart -heart talk with Jesus, with God. When you are talking heart-to-heart -heart with God, then... Then you understand him. Then there will be no distraction. Then you know what he wants from you. 
My dear friends, God indeed is here tonight to talk to us, to talk to our hearts. He wants to do something in us that no man would be able to reproduce. He wants to bless us this night. And that's why he's here. God's timing. <laughs> God's timing is golden. Oh, Jesus. My friends, I want to draw our attention to the response of Jesus to Mary. Jesus told Mary clearly, my time has not yet come. And that's where we are, are going to focus on this message. God's timing. My time has not yet come. <laughs> and Mary was asking God to do something when it was not yet the time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It is not yet the time. And yet Mary was asking for something that was not yet God's timing. God's time. Jesus understands when something is God's time and when it is not God's time. Remember, at certain place in the scripture, Jesus said, the hour has come. And now how come this time? He said, woman, the hour has not yet come. Can you think about that? In John 19, verse 10, Jesus said, it is finished. <laughs> it is what? Finished. So he knows when it is finished. When the time is for a finished product. He knows. But he knows when it is not yet the time. Do you know that God has his own timing of things? <laughs> oh my goodness. God has his own time. He has his own way of doing his own things. When is the time? Nothing can stop what God wants to do in your life. <laughs> you see, in John chapter 7 verse 30, the Bible tells us that they, they, they tried to seize Jesus, but they couldn't lay hands on him. You know why the Bible said? Because his time has not yet come. The time of trial, the time of temptation, the time of persecution had not yet come. Heaven hadn't approved it. <laughs> you see that? In another episode, they wanted to grab him, but just the time, the, the, the Bible said, it's not yet the time. <laughs> it's not yet the time. In John 7, verse 6, the Bible says, my time is not yet here. God is talking to all this night. <laughs> Jesus. His time has not yet come. Yet, how come he did that miracle when the hour, when the time has not yet come? It could not be explained any other way other than that there is a unique, outstanding, powerful relationship between Jesus and the mother. It emphasizes the, 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 the uniqueness of the relationship between Jesus and the mother. The relationship that had been till date and till forever. That when Mary still goes on her behalf to Jesus to plead the matter, she cannot come back disappointed. She cannot come back with a front face. And what I'm telling you is not just theology. I am telling you what I know and see and witness and have become my testimony today. 
my dear friends, today, God wants to reveal to us that He wants to show mercy no matter the situation we are going through. God's timing for mercy. <laughs> Jesus. My dear friends in Christ, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, My time, that time for everything under heaven. Now remember that God created time. Everything in, 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 in life is timed. Everything is existing in, in, the, in a time frame. That time frame for everything. Man has a time frame of existence. Everything is always having their own duration or time frame. And God honors that time frame. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm talking about? God himself honors the time frame. Even though that he lives outside the time and the space. As a matter of fact, God, G-O-D, God lives outside time. Remember, he doesn't die. So he lives beyond time. He lives beyond space. Heaven and earth could not even contain him. So he lives beyond space. And it's still amazing to me that the one that the whole world could not contain, look at, the, look at how big the world is. Look at how big that somebody could be airborne non-stop for 17 hours and you are still going to a country, from another country. Can you imagine how big the world is? And yet, this is just the Earth. We're not even talking about other planets. We're not even talking about the galaxy, the universe. We're not even talking about the stars. We're not even talking about the heavens. Now, what are we talking about heaven? Because there's a difference between heavens and heaven. That's the talk of another day. Now, but this God could not even be contained in the space, in all these spaces. How come he got, oh my goodness, how, how come he was contained in the womb of a woman? Can somebody help me please? I, I need to help at this point. He was contained in the womb of a woman. The one that could not be contained in a space was contained in the womb of a woman. Can, can you, can you, is there any way you can explain that for me? That the one who could not be timed was not made to honor time. <laughs> can you see that? When it was only time for a miracle, yet yeah, this same woman whose womb contained Jesus was able to Ask Jesus to do something that heaven had to change the calendar. Come on. Come on. What are we talking about? Such a person must be special. Such a person must be amazing. Such a person must be wonderful. I mean, I don't even really know how to describe such a character. Called Mary, the mother of Jesus. I know many times in my journey with with Jesus, he had told me clearly, my son, persevere in prayer. This is not the time. I have heard him in many occasions tell me that. And I had to wait for God's own time. He had passed messages to me in certain private matters. And he to tell me, my son, persevere in prayer. I will answer you. Don't give up. In other words, he wanted me to prayerfully wait for his own time. But not for Mary. When he came, from, when he came to Mary, the, the formula changed. <laughs> the God who could not be contained by the whole universe, not accepted to be contained in a finite space of somebody's womb. Meanwhile, such a God is infinite. 
Can you imagine the infinite in the finite womb? Can you imagine the one that the whole world could not contain being contained in a finite womb? That the one who is beyond time was able to do something and change the divine calendar just because somebody made a request. <laughs> oh my goodness. My dear friends, God himself indeed respects time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the anointed one. Yet we see him indicating that respect for time was critical. How do I know? Because the Bible says so. Woman, my time has not yet come. Jesus knows when the hour, the time has not yet come. But he knows when the hour has come. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be, to be handed over. He knew that time. And when the time came, nothing could even stop him. Nobody could even... Uh, when the time came, he was, he, he was betrayed. Everything began to function according to the, the interests of the enemies. But actually, God allowed it for a purpose. Because it was a time of trials for Jesus. Sometimes we'll get into our own time of trials. Time of troubles. And also have our own time of glory. Time of joy. And these are the things we reflect upon when we go through the rosary. But our friends in Christ. <laughs> oh my goodness. The, the, the miracle was necessary anyway. There was a need. And Jesus had to meet that need. Do you understand that? But the, the, the timing, the timing was not right. That's where the issue is. The timing was not right. And yet, the request of this woman moved the hand of heaven. I don't know how many of you that believe in the intercessory power of Blessed Mother Mary. But I want to tell you something. It is a reservoir of spiritual Harvest, if we could tap into the intercessory power and grace in this woman. Many have tried to use theologies and other things to talk her down, but we cannot change the truth. The truth is there. The Bible is just there, clearly black and white, telling us how wonderful somebody's intercession moved the hand of Jesus. My dear friends in Christ, I would ask you a question. How often have I done things that seemed right, but they were not according to God's timing? I'm not expecting you to answer me, but think about that. <laughs> Sometimes we try to maneuver things our way. But, but it was not God's timing. Sometimes we squeeze things into our own timing and not walking along with God's timing. When we have respect for, for timing of things, that is respect for timing, uh, God's timing is direct declaration of our trust in Him. To direct our path. When we don't learn how to wait on the Lord, we enter into troubles. We do things our way. We don't know how to wait on God's timing. Look at Abraham. 
he couldn't wait any longer. In fact, the prophet was not actually Abraham. It was Sarah. Sarah couldn't wait again. She she she, she suggested to Abraham, why don't you go and sleep with our house girl? And that was how Abraham slept with the Hagar. And Ishmael came through that relationship. But Ishmael did not bring joy. Ishmael brought tears, brought sorrow, brought cry. Sarah was crying because of Ishmael. Abraham was crying. Bitterness in the family. The coming of a child is supposed to bring joy to the family, but not Ishmael. How did Ishmael come? Ishmael came as a result of man's own idea. <laughs> Ishmael was not God's idea. I hope you know that. Ishmael was not God's idea. It was man's invention. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ishmael, I like this. Ishmael, <laughs> it was the idea of man. It was not a package that came as a result of God's timing. And his coming brought tears, sorrow, bitterness, rancor. But when it was God's time, then Isaac came and everybody was joyful. How do I know? Because the Abraham and Sarah decide to call that boy Isaac. You know what Isaac means? Laughter. Laughter. The one that made me laugh. People had been scolding me, reproaching me, but God used him to take away my reproach. Oh my goodness. I am praying for somebody tonight. May God give you just... just I'm not even asking for two miracles now. I'm Just one single miracle that will take away your reproach in the name of Jesus. Isaac was just one miracle. But he was, it, 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 God used him to settle the reproach in the family. May God do it for you tonight in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. When we are waiting on God's own timing of things, it means that we have accepted Him as our Lord, as our Shepherd, that He understands the best time for us to receive these blessings. You see, my little boy in the house, sometimes, he said, Daddy, Daddy, give me a key. Daddy, I want to drive. I know he cannot. I cannot give him to a key. This is a small boy. He doesn't even, even know where the ignition is. But if I go and buy a car for him and give him to drive. That means I want to kill him. The timing is not right for him to have a, a key of a car right now. But when he grows up, uh -huh, then he can have a key of a car. Many of us manipulate ourselves into marriage, manipulate ourselves into jobs, manipulate ourselves into a lot of things. And when we distort God's own calendar, <laughs> yeah, 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 and do things our way, it usually comes with pains, somehow regrets. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The psalmist says, for the lines in pleasant places for me. Psalm 16, verse 7. Divine timing. Can you imagine you are walking in dominion and your feet are just falling on pleasant places because God is guiding you. He's guiding your footsteps according to His own That's it. My friends, my prayer for you and for I myself is that 
we shall continuously seek God's timing in all that we do in the name of Jesus. And if you want to ask something funny, then if you want it in a way that it will, the timing will change in your favor, then you need to go and do something. And that is to call on the Blessed Mother to intercede for you. This is what many Christians have not come to know. You remember it was not time for that miracle at Cana. But Mary interceded. She interceded. She came into the show. She came into the occasion, into the matter. And when she came into the matter, Jesus had to now, had, things had to shift in the spiritual realm. Heaven had to hold an emergency meeting on how to change things immediately. I'm just trying to put it in, in, a, in a human concept. But we know that it doesn't take, it's not actually they will call for a meeting and all that. But just in a flash of a moment is done. Because remember, in heaven things don't happen according to time. That is, heaven is timeless. <laughs> in heaven, there's no shadow. There's nothing like, oh, this is nine o'clock. No, 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 no. It is continuously day. No day, no, no night. Don't ask me whether I've been, been there before. But I would want to tell you, the scripture tells us there's no shadow, no variableness in heaven. If there's no shadow there, then there's, then what it means is that there's no darkness. Everything is not, um, it, there's no darkness really. Praise the Lord. So my dear friends, we are asking God to give us the grace to wait on Him. Many troubles we pass through today is because we have tried to manipulate things into the way it suits us. And this is the way the world functions. The philosophy of the world is to get our own way of doing things, to walk according to the flesh. Oh yeah? I, I have met so many who manipulate themselves into marriages and then, and then they, they, they're out of it. And they are the certain things they did. Ministry has exposed me to a lot of things. A lot of you go and do some charms and all that. I remember a message I gave sometime in the prayer line. I didn't even call charms and all that. But a lady felt guilty. And she had to call me. She said, brother, I, I grabbed my husband through charm. <laughs> I said, where's the charm? She said, on the bed. I said, go and take it around. Take it out from now and now let's pray over it and kill it. But even though she got the husband through charm, there was no peace. Satan cannot give you something free of charge. <laughs> There's always a hook somewhere. If you can wait on God's timing, God will give you a full package that comes with peace. There can be troubles, but God will still give you victory. God will still make a way. That Jesus or God is with you doesn't mean there are no troubles. Troubles will surely come. Shall come? Storm will surely come. You will surely be misunderstood. People may betray you. Even though God is with you. But you know what? He will still make a way for you. He will see you through. He will calm the storm. He will help you to navigate your way out of that situation. But Jesus wants us to wait on him, upon the Lord. Remember the Bible saying, those who wait upon the Lord shall have their strength renewed, right? That's talking about divine timing. That's talking about divine timing, my friends. <laughs> Jesus. So God's timing is so important in our relationship with Jesus. M many of us may remember there was a time that David ran into a very big problem. He fought the Amalekites. He, he fought the. He went for war, and they, by the time he was coming back, the whole city was empty. The city was empty, and uh, he tried to find out what happened. And he found out that when he went for war, his enemies, the, the Amalekites, 
came behind and they plundered the land, took all their women, took their children, took everything, destroyed the city. The spirit of the Amalekites, that is the spirit that comes from behind you to come and attack you. <laughs> David suffered that. And so when he saw the devastation the enemies caused in the land, David was in sorrow. David was crying. He wanted to say, God, what has happened? The Amalekites came and plundered the land. <laughs> Jesus. But when David saw that situation, he cried to the Lord and said, the Lord, what should I do? Should I pursue them? Or should I leave them? Should I pursue? <laughs> he was asking God, what should I do? Is it right for me to pursue these Amalekites? Is it the timing? Or should I leave it? That is wisdom. That is wisdom. Knowing when to step into this, into this river is so important. You are crossing the river. Divine timing. I was watching a program in National Geographic some uh, days ago. And uh, there was this program in which the... There was a documentary on uh, hardened criminals that escaped from a, a maximum prison in, in this country, America. Do you know that how they escaped the prison became a case study? <laughs> it was it, it, it was reckoned to be one of the most complicated event of uh, uh, of prison escape. And this prison was surrounded by water. So how did, they, it, how did they escape? One of the studies was that they must have timed the tide. Because the season, I mean the, the river, happened to be very cold that no human could actually go through it and survive it within a couple of minutes you are dead. And it was believed there were sharks there. How did they make it? And then the 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 flow of the river, the flow the, the river reverses in the direction of flow at a certain time of the day. And after the stories, they concluded that they must have timed the river to know when it flows into a particular direction that will help them to navigate their way to escape. David asked God in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. And the Bible says, And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Should I pursue the Amalekites? Will I overtake them? Will I succeed? And God told him, My son, you will certainly overtake them. And you will certainly succeed in the rescue. David heard that and he moved ahead. And uh, we know the rest of the story. He succeeded. One of the major mistakes we make in life is that we get into things because we act on on rational mind, not on on the impulse of the spirit. We we don't pray about things, and if we do, do we actually wait on God for to speak to us? I said in the prayer some time ago, when I'm praying and God tells me, I have done it. Forget it. I won't even ask Him for to help me, for to answer me. I, the, the chapter will close. Any time I remember that one time, I say, God, thank you because I know You have done it. When he tells me, go ahead, forget it, nothing will talk me out of it. 
That's where you know I'm stubborn, really. <laughs> the man you call a gentleman, that way you know nothing will change my mind. When God says, go ahead, and everybody telling you, my friend, are you out of your sense? How can you do this? David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord told him to go ahead. If there's something you must learn in this message, it is to wait upon the time of the Lord. It is to inquire of the Lord. Ask God questions. Talk to Him. Some people say that God don't talk. How does God talk? God, God talk, talk to me. Some people claim out temple story says, I was talking with a lady just some few days ago. And she said, but brother, my problem is that God doesn't talk to me. I said, don't accuse God though. God talks to you. Tell me that you don't know that God talks to you. God does talk. He talks to his children. <laughs> Mother friends, it is time for us to seek the face of the Lord and wait upon Him and wait upon Him, waiting upon the Lord, waiting upon the Lord. <laughs> I pray upon somebody for the anointing to walk in the timing of God in your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> my Lord. May God bless your time. May God bless your ways. May God strengthen you. May God fight your battle. May God make a way for you where there is no way. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Continue to remember that when it is God's time, nothing can talk you out of it. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, just nothing. Because God's time, people say, is the best. Is not true. You may not have children now, but when God settles you, when God remembers you, when it comes to be God's time, nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop it. People who have issues or Concerns with God's own timing. You need what we call grace to wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. And that's one of the things God had to deal with me at the beginning, when he was preparing me into ministry or for ministry. And I didn't know that he was calling me into ministry. And he had to speak to me in, pro in Proverbs, telling me that I need to wait upon him. To, before I get to the next step in life, I need to wait upon him. He, he was telling me at those days... At the point I was writing these things down, and that he clearly told me, look, you need to wait upon me to lead you through. When I was getting ready for my wedding, the Lord passed a message that I thought about this message, and I said, oh my goodness, God is wonderful. God said, I, that's something I wanted to buy for me. I thought you would mention a cow, or maybe a cow. <laughs> he said, go and buy me a clock. This was God talking to me. Go and buy me a clock. Put it in my church. Every time I see that clock, I will remember that there is a covenant to do things in your life according to my own timing. So I went and bought the clock and put it in the church. It may not make sense to a rational mind. If you want to submit it to scientific evaluation, you're wasting your time. God's own things are just... God's, I mean, God's way is completely different from man's ways. Why would he see the time first? Would, would, would he have to come to the church to see the time for before he will not do what he wants to do? I don't need to think about that. What I know is that he said it and that's it to it. I don't put it into evaluation again. <laughs> God's own timing. I am praying for you for God's own timing to begin to take place in your life. Let God be in charge. 
<laughs> Jesus. Let him be in charge. Let him take over the sequence of events in your life. Let the enemy never come to alter divine timing for you. Many of us have allowed the devil to come and interrupt or intercept God's timing of events in our lives. And when that happens, it becomes another, another story. It becomes another story. I was listening to a lady who, from her story, she was raised in a very good family and uh, promised to marry as a virgin. But in her place of work, she got herself in a hostile environment. So sometimes she'll be crying in her place of work. She doesn't know why people were against her in the office. So one young man showed sympathy. And this man happened to be her boss. So why are you always crying? And look at her complaining to this boss. And the boss took over the matter, tried to protect her and all that. So stereotypes started. They started having, having time together. And at that point, nothing was going on. And then they start having time outside the office, and the before now was happening. She was considered to be raped, and that led to, pregnan to pregnancy. Her story was a very, a very disturbing one. A lot of things in her life got altered because of that pregnancy. Mother friends. Our Almighty God is here to help us. The devil wants to change God's time and to interrupt God's plan for us, but we cancel that in the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for somebody that every agenda of the enemies against your life to interrupt God's planning, God's event in your life, let that plan of the enemies be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Can you pray right now? In the name of Jesus, I decree the devil shall not interrupt or interfere with the plan of God for my life, for my family, for my ministry. In the name of Jesus, who God created me to be, that I will be. In the name of Jesus, that I will be. My children will not be talked out of their destiny. In the name of Jesus, my family shall not be deceived out of God's timing for them. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord guide our steps as a family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friends, they filled the jars with water. In fact, not just filling it, but filled to the brim. Filled the jars with what? With the brim. <laughs> There's a lesson there. When God is giving you blessings, He doesn't give you half measure. He gives it to you full dose, to the brim. To the brim means that it, full capacity. There's no other way water could get in. If you put a drop of water, it will spill. And I pray for you, may God's abundant measure of blessings rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. But take note, the Bible says that they were, you know, they were able to feel, the feel, the, the, the water jars with water. And the Bible gave the number six. Six water jars. The number six, biblically, is symbolic of man. Man was created, you know, on the sixth day. <laughs> this means that God desires to fill us with his word. Just like the the wine, I mean, the the pots, the jar, the empty jars, were filled with water. So God wants to fill us with his own water of the Spirit. What is the water of the Spirit? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. One of the symbolisms of the Holy Spirit is flowing water. He may be represented with fire, or with dove, uh, or wind, but he could also be represented by um, 
flowing water. And he wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in this season, the church is waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. We are asking the Holy Spirit to fill us today. Brim. Remember, we are jars. We are God's jars. <laughs> oh my goodness. Broco has come again. Where did you get this idea of that man is God's jars? But I just want to tell you something. We are God's jars. Vessels. Clay vessels. You hear that? That's what the Bible tells me. And that's what I tell you. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. And the Bible says, For we have this treasure of jars, of clay. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. So that means Borwakwe is a jar of clay. God created him from clay. I make clay products. As well as you. All of us. And we are treasures, God's treasures, heavenly treasures in jars of clay. So even at Kenna, those empty jars, we are made with clay. Just like God made us with clay. And then they now fill the water, I mean the jars, with water. And when God created you and me, He filled us with His own breath, with His own spirit. He just said, <laughs> the moment He released the breath upon man, life came into man. <laughs> Psalm 1 to 9, and the Bible tells us that He took His breath and they died. <laughs> Jesus. If God takes His breath, we die. Because we don't have any life. When the breath of God is not in us. And that's what the Holy Spirit is talking to us tonight. He wants to fill out the brim with His power. He wants to fill out the brim with His anointing. <laughs> Jesus. Father, we need your power tonight. Father, touch us in a special way tonight. Fill us to the brim with the Holy Spirit again. As the jars we are filled to the brim with water. The water that became a sweet wine. May you fill us to the brim with the water of the Spirit the sweet Holy Spirit. Fill us to the brim, Lord. We need you. We cannot function without the Holy Spirit, Lord. Your Spirit gives life. Touch us again. Touch us again. Oh, Jesus. Touch us again, Holy Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, touch us again in a special way. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we need you again. Make way where there's no way, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit touch us. Let your Holy Spirit touch us. We need a touch of the Master. We need a touch of the Master. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, Father, show us your mercy again. Bring revival to the land again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, 
Come into us, O Lord, and do some miracles. Bring revival unto your children. Yes, my Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let your Holy Spirit take over. Let your Holy Spirit sanctify. Sanctify us, O Lord. Sanctify us again, Holy Father. We need your sanctity, O Lord. Your sanctifying power. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my God. Thank you, our Daddy. As your people are calling on you tonight, we know you are on the throne. And we know you have answered us already. As you fill these jars with the Holy Spirit. Father, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Help us to be true witnesses of your presence. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. My dear friends, once we are filled with the Holy Spirit, nothing can separate us from God. And He will run the affairs of our lives as we yield to Him. Let us walk in His divine timing. When we allow the Holy Spirit to live in us, then He leads us into God's timing of events. He becomes the governor of our life. The Holy Spirit is the governor. As so we allow Him to take over our lives, He will amaze us with things that will bring glory to the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, when the Holy Spirit is in you, He takes over your affairs. He will amaze you with effortless work because He does the work he blesses your work as your hand. We pray that He blesses this ministry and other ministries, blesses our secular work, our studies, our investments, our evangelism, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the grace to work in His timing, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We pray that the desire and the willingness to work in His timing will be our portion from today. This and many more we pray. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give you our thanksgiving for giving us the opportunity to, to listen to your word and to share your word. Father, help us to follow you and to do your will. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll cover this message about of Jesus. We'll cover the message with the Lord of Jesus. Amen and amen. And amen.